hey guys and welcome to Poison of Guard Masquerade Guide. And considering that this is a very difficult deck to play and to make, uh, making guide is uh, justified in this case, so let's just get started. Uh, first of all, we got Color, which is basically an upgrade to Tactical Advantage. If you don't have it, don't worry too much about it, but this is better if they have anything with, tech, uh, with uh, active ability. Also, we have uh, synergies in the deck, like Thirsty Dame, but there are other synergies in the Nilfgaard set that work with it. Uh, Masquerade Ball is kind of the key card in this deck. You can win without it, but uh, it gives us a lot of value. I kind of rate it as like 21 value card for 14. But the only disadvantage of that is that if it gets artifact removed, it's bad. But, but we can actually protect it with... Fion. Fion is a defender that tar that uh, opponent cannot target other cards on this row. Very good. So Fion can defend Masquerade Ball from getting removed. Really good. What else we got? Strategic Withdrawal allows us to play, uh, well, just, re re uh, just return a unit, then play an Aristocrat, a condition for the Masquerade Ball, the same turn we play the Masquerade Ball, so at least we can trigger the first condition, which already makes this card kind of worth it, but in some cases we can actually trigger the entire thing in one turn. So we might play Roderick and he finds another Aristocrat. Done! Masquerade Ball is played, your opponent holding the artifact counter for no reason whatsoever, other than just less points. So, big punishment to them, and you just played it very safely. So, without that, I find it really hard to justify. Uh, it's, it's risky to put in these uh, scenarios, but if you're prepared, you're gonna get a lot of points. Vincent is the big taunt stomper, basically. He destroys enemy unit with status. Uh, status can be something that you apply, like bleed, lock, poison, and those are the main ones. Uh, or the enemy has on themselves, which is uh, taunt, of course. It can be po it can be spy, that's enemy status. Uh, you got shield, you got vitality, you got doomed. So you got a lot to watch out for, and you can just like, hmm, what do I choose? Usually not that hard, and they might play a Savola and like, oh, look at that, three points for me. So. Vincent gotta get a lot of value in basically all matchups because he can usually stomp a taunt, which is extremely handy. You can always just try to double poison it, but um, no. And uh, yeah, this deck definitely has and uh, needs proactive and uh, reactive plays. The core value generators are Nausicaa Sergeant, which are based on deploy. We have quite a lot of those, and we have Thirsty Dame, which is based on status. If the enemy is spamming Vitality uh, and the Thirsty Dame stay up, you win the game. So, there you have it. <laughs> so, that's pretty easy. So, Thirsty Dame kind of likes status. Uh, but we can also play Spies and uh, that's status too, apparently. So, that's kind of nice. Uh, same thing with Joachim. He's a Spy. He goes in. He's an Aristocrat. That's extra good. We also get some boost and we just get a guy. So, Joachim is just a good addition to the deck. Mother Hari finds us a uh, Masquerade Ball. Mother Hari is just a uh, auto include in every deck basically right now uh, for good reason. And um, well, keep in mind, she also extends the round. So if your opponent has more value generation than you, it shouldn't really be a thing because you have a lot of poison and luck. Uh, yeah, you you might lose some points, but you find your, your win condition or you find Vincent so or you find Joachim. So we have some really good option here. Kahir. Not something everybody has, but I think you're just crazy if you don't have this. Because you can play Kahir with a Fion. Fion behind a taunt. And you play Kahir Fion. What do you have? Your opponents playing consume, game over. They concede. They can win. Zero chance to win. Your opponents playing Noram. They can win. It's game over. GG, man. Unless they're playing like order-based soldiers, but those those get shut down. They don't have a chance. Machines, they kind of get they get shut down too. If they're playing boost, game over. GG. Scouting up is not even a thing, but I guess game over as well. So anything, any passive strategy they are playing, game over. They're never gonna win. Zero chance. If harmony, zero chance. No one has a chance against you who who's playing a passive deck. They they cannot literally cannot win. 
it's impossible. Zero percent chance. Unless I don't know what happens. I don't know. <laughs> Zero percent chance, from what I can tell. You only have a, like a, a bit of a, a fight with, with aggressive decks. But that basically have nothing on the board. And maybe you'll play super, super uh, s small units. So maybe like a, a siege deck that actually doesn't have the scenario in it. But they all have the scenario in it. And they play the scenario and they get shut down. Also their machines get locked. So this deck is pretty good. Morale, poison enemy, poison enemy. Yeah. Deploy, order, poison, poison. That's just, that's just really good. Uh, Fion, pretty important. He just defends the guys. Also, he's a deploy. Also, he triggers the assimilate of one more lab cup bearer. Very minor bonus there. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Isabel of Hag, a bit of an uh, odd choice maybe, but because we have a strategic withdrawal and if we get uh, round one, we can, even if Isabel just triggers, uh, then... Uh, just on regular round, you, you get a choice between two cards, you pick the better one, easy peasy. But if your opponent is running out of cards, last round, you act last, they play their last card, you're about to play your last card, but uh-oh, you actually draw a card, you get a card from Isabel of Hag, and what you're gonna do, yeah, you're gonna play that card, you can replay Isabel of Hag with a strategic withdrawal, it's just, it just game over. Like, if you win round one, and... And you can get away with like playing Isabel of Hag, and it's like anywhere close. The game is anywhere close, and you can stay sage. Uh, you can save your hero power. It's game over. Isabel of Hag will win you the game, and unless they save some big removal for later, uh, usually they don't. They they're kind of uh, concerned about wasting it, so that wins you the game. If you win round one and you have Isabel, you win the game. Unless they have some way to shut it down. Philip von Morleham. Oh, he's a pretty good proactive play. Of course, your opponent has status often. So, this is good. Uh, sometimes he gets killed, but he's just okay. He's just a proactive play. You need proactive plays. You need units to play on the board. Uh, that, first of all, generate value and just like stay on the board. Uh, that's why we have the Nausicaa Sergeants. That's why we have the Thirsty Dane. That, uh, that's why we have a um, one Magni Division. One Magni Division is pretty okay. He generates good value. I recommend playing him on the melee row. Uh, and these are the best value generators currently. But let's just go back to the cup bearer. He poisons unit and we can also purify unit. It also has a simulate that triggers very rarely. Like obviously poison is our control mostly. But that's not all. We, we also have uh, artifact counter here. I prefer False Siri for artifact uh, countering because she also has movement, makes her less 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 useless if uh, she doesn't find an artifact, and also she has a little bit higher uh, base power, so makes her, makes it a little better just to keep her for last round. Because if you just have like a regular guy here, which is a good choice, Bomb Heaver, holding Bomb Heaver last round doesn't feel that great, but. Yeah, it doesn't feel as bad to hold, uh, uh, yeah, just false Siri. And if you don't see an artifact, you can probably get some uh, move value. <laughs> Even if you, like, if you don't want to stomp a taunt, you can actually just move the taunt out of the way. <laughs> I mean, that that could be good, but you always want to stomp a taunt. So that's just crazy. Uh, yeah, we got Roderick here. He's a spy, he triggers uh, Thirsty Dames. He's a deploy, he triggers the Nazca Sergeants as he finds you stuff. He's an Aristra cat. Uh, yeah. Uh, we got Rottasser, who That actually triggers the Nazca Sergeant and the Thirsty Dame. And when the poison triggers, Thirsty Dame gets triggered two more times. So this actually is plus three points for the Thirsty Dame. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty damn good. Fangs of the Empire, direct to poison. Yeah, value generation, King Cobra. It's a little bit uh, worse than the Fangs of the Empire. I don't recommend going for more poison than this. This is a basically as much poison as you can get away with because you're just gonna get punished. Um, we got the Von Lamb Hunter here, which is uh, bleeding and then the lock. Keep in mind, this is status and deploy, so triggers are value generators. Value generators are a little bit hard to come by in Nerf Guard, but these are actually pretty damn good. Even though this one got nerfed, but you need some value generators because if you play this early, he's still gonna get like nine rounds of value 
that's that kind of adds up that that's important and you want to spend like at least the first few turns uh playing vow generators so that's it you you have everything you need to beat everybody and uh i guess watch out for mail so don't don't uh tin too heavily and other than that yeah good luck good luck for your uh pro rank and lots of mmr uh you did it <laughs> so uh thanks for watching guys and uh we're gonna have some gameplay coming up and if you enjoy like a guide like this uh just uh yeah just tell me about it usually you just wanna go for like a long round free with this deck you don't really mind going for a short short round as well uh what i would one one meta call that i would call out is if you see elves uh don't try to fight them round one or anyone just uh goes really crazy with the, their tempo round one don't just just let them have it just let them have it because it's better to give up after three rounds and uh i mean three turns in round one and just try to fight round two uh, maybe even with the masquerade ball you can just like turn your uh turn your cards into card advantage and they, they just gonna get punished so a lot of players try to really push round one watch out for that the elves are particularly dangerous so yeah that's it so here comes the gameplay okay we got a leaf blower here precision strike okay wow so it's gonna be a boring one uh well kick this what open a lost connection well that happens all the time against me <laughs> uh you can hook up with yuri in the expansion fuck no i want to do that with tahar tahar couldn't do that fuck no i i kind of did that i think i did that no i didn't i, I was yeah, I really tried to do that. I think my uh, admiration for Yuria was maybe bordering on creepy. If there was like... Okay, maybe that's always the case in uh, these games. Because in, in games, if I have a uh, romance option... Okay, time for sleepy times. Oh, that's... Okay, uh, good night, Sodo. How, how late is it for you right now if you have... Uh, is it like 11 p.m.? I think it's like plus two ish, right? Just uh, never mind. Okay, let's go Magni in the front. I should definitely keep the time zones uh in mind a little bit. Uh, wow, not a Mahakamara are there. It's uh, uh twenty one forty six in Poland. Hmm. I used to be in that time zone. Uh, now I'm uh one. Yeah, one hour ahead. Uh, so my streaming just seems even later now. Wow. Yeah, at any rate, uh, Spellforce 3 is definitely a game I would recommend. Oh no, the boar. Wait, what is he doing? Oh. Oh, nice! After that, he gets the Broccolon Sentinel. Uh, did, the, did you guys finish the expansion? Or have anyone played the expansion? Of Spapo's free. Is it really... What do you guys think? Uh, by the way, if you name your character... Uh, Bog Bog Baldur's Gate 3. Just name the guy Tahar. I don't, I don't know. There's only one Tahar. Ever. Tahar was a god. He cannot. He cannot be uh, copied. He was the best. I can just lock that. There's no one as cool as Tahar. Seriously, I've never seen a character that was so OP. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. The, the Tahar I played was, was like stupidly OP. I've never had that experience. That you have one character that walks into an army and he just starts whacking at people. He was basically a paladin. My Tahar was like basically a paladin. 
what he was doing is just like walk into a group and he just like start pummeling at people and when he goes down low then he just heals himself and he was like <laughs> you just you just send him in start the game send him into the enemy camp and he just easy will eventually take them out no problem <laughs> what the fuck he had like maximum resistance max hp max strength he's like he even got the all the stat boost that i can pick up of course the best gear uh what a tanky bastard i did uh, finish both the game and the expansion i'm biased but i liked it you can have the same experience in uh, tyranny uh, um, in what sense? I think we're just gonna pass here. Same how. In theory, now I was the well, I was, I was the kind of the bad guy. I mean, in Spell for Three, I was kind of the good guy. At least I, I thought of myself that way. Actually, in, th in Tyranny, I kind of thought my thought of myself as the good guy too. I, I played uh, a really good guy there. I wasn't like the biggest jerk around. Maybe maybe others would perceive me as as a bad guy, but I suppose everyone kind of perceives themselves as the hero of their story. I just I just try to make a, a bad system work. You can have the, yeah, uh, Spell Force 2 was the same. Uh, you had the three spells that made your hero uh, party gods. Oh, you're talking about that. Mm, I didn't have that experience in Tyranny. Maybe I made a worse character builds. Yeah, I didn't have that experience. I, I actually found Tyranny somewhat challenging. It wasn't like super easy. I'm not even talking about the party here. Uh, they just, uh, just the character. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what? You had to give uh, the AI unlimited money and instant build time? What? Uh, that seems pretty cheaty to make it fun. Wow. And they still lost. What the hell? What's up, Penguin? So you just use the, the precision strike to tempo round one. Uh, I guess that's fine. Oh no, call the forest. He's pushing me. So that deals free damage. I don't have a way to kill it instantly. Let's defender in the back. Actually, this might give me a card advantage, but I'm not really getting his strategy. He's pushing me. I recently played Neverwinter Nights Enhanced uh, with a friend. Had a lot of fun. Wow. Are you me? We should do that together. I did that a little bit in the past. Uh, yeah, wow. Never Into Nights was an amazing game. And I'm not sure if you looked into it, but at least the time I was checking it out, it had a lot of uh, player-made uh, add-ons, like uh, mods. Basically, like, no, not DLCs. Basically, they made their adventures in Neverwinter Nights, and apparently, like, some of them are pretty good. Others, maybe not so much. <laughs> I played, like, an 18-plus uh, add-on there. Uh, it's uh, Dance with the Rogues. Um, I don't know if you want that. I mean, 
I enjoyed that quite a bit. For me, that was the highlight of those add-ons, uh, mods. I looked into other ones as well. Uh, I think I played like a few others. I, I played one other with a friend. Uh, that was good for a multiplayer party. Uh, one other, again, some of them, most of them were like fight focused. Tried to get into some other ones, but kind of found them a little slow. So uh, it's a bit sizzled out my interest in them. Let's do Rot Duster. Okay. Uh, there are some glitches, but it's still fun. Uh, there are a lot of players, main modules, yeah. You can have a lot of fun with that. I saw that, but didn't play it yet. Oh my god, a trap. We can destroy that. We all make sacrifices. What was it? It was a crushing trap. Nice. <laughs> Who knew? Artifact country was so good. I'm actually quite impressed uh, by how many uh, how, how the quality of the of the games players can make. I played Androl, which I rate as one of the best games I've ever played. Uh, that's a Skyrim overhaul. Yeah, that was amazing. Nothing as quite as amazing as Androl, but Androl was amazing. If if you like RPGs, wait, what? I have to play now. No, no, it's end turn, right? Okay. If you like RPGs, I think Androl is like a total must-have. What the fuck? I have three sevens. Oh man, we're in trouble. We have to win. Scorch. Wow. We are looking for players for Divinity Original Sin to play through. Hmm. I played Divinity Original Sin quite a bit, then I kind of stopped with it. I think I was having a little bit of performance issues with it, but yeah, it's it's a fun game. I, I personally found uh, the turn-based system uh, okay, but something I rather... I actually prefer real-time or, or simultaneous turns with pause. I think that's the way I should call it. Uh, let's do morale. Actually, we can replay the rot duster if you want the card advantage here. We can replay the rot duster. We play morale. Death can come where blood does not. And we replay the rot duster. In the back. Okay. Oh. Huh. Let's assimilate. <clears throat> I don't know if I... That sounds like a lot of fun, Somnoritsi, but I don't know if I could commit to that. And I wouldn't wanna hold back the party. The problem with, like... Such a adventures, I feel like, is that if it's like a like a 100 hour long game, like that's a huge commitment. And I and I had that experience. I had that experience in many times in the past. And sometimes I was trying to go faster. Sometimes the other players want to go faster, and it's just kind of hard to find a good balance. Also had this experience in Path of Exile, when I was like, when I when I played Path of Exile by myself, I just like, go, read the text, listen to the thingies, just fight carefully, lead, loot some stuff, I'm just like, I, I played pretty carefully. When I go into a squ uh, squad with like, with others, it's like, rush, 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 rush. It's like, okay, cool guys, I'm like, sure. 
This is not bad. This is a little different. Uh, why did he push again? That's why. Well, it, we're still in a lead. I only have two... Actually, we have three aristocrats. Yeah, we got two aristocrats. This gives us possibly an aristocrat. So, Roderick is not bad. I just start with Matahari. Come on. I, I played a lot of Grim Dawn earlier this year. I, I played it once with a friend. It was it was fun. And there's a mod for real time combat for Divinity 2. I, is is this? Is there? When I looked into it, there really wasn't. Not for the entire game. Apparently, there's a real-time combat mod for, uh, for Arena. I personally feel like uh, when it comes to turn-based, uh, to the turn-based style, it could be a great choice. But the viability of turn-based is based on the acting parties. So, how many, how many parties are here? Because if you have two parties, you don't have to have them acting simultaneously, necessarily. If they take turns, it's still like, you know, it's it's like twice twice as, as slow. It's not too bad. But if you have like, you know, like like a tactical game, you have like 10 units, they have 20 units. It just takes forever to play that out. Uh, so that's a bit of a problem, in my opinion. Uh, Grim Dawn is a very well-made game. I tried Path of Exile just a bit, but I didn't like it. I think it's a good game. If you liked... If you played and liked the... Uh, Diablo 1 and 2... Uh, it, it should... It should be a pretty good game. Wait, what? Oh. No one refuses me. No one refuses me. Oh, we have a card advantage, so... Uh, as long as we can poison anything, we should be good. Oh, man. What is it you want? Let's go with Isabel of Hag. This could give us a card advantage. And when it comes to these systems, like uh, how, how the game is made, I have a preference for real-time with pause. Real-time could be good as well, but I think real-time with the pause, or should I say, simultaneous turns with pause, that's, that's a little bit easier when it comes to party-based games, so there's definitely a, a call for a bit of a turn-based system, but it, 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 it doesn't need to be like just strict turn-based, it can be simultaneous turn-based. Uh, what uh, simultaneous turn base allows you to do is that instead of like trying to micromanage like every every second of every every fight, you you can just like you know they make decisions like every six seconds and they just do that, keep doing that. So I think that works really well, and uh, yeah, that's a pretty good system. Uh, we can poison. Well, I just poison here. But yeah, obviously I like turn base too. Have you played the uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 before? I've not played it with a lot of people. But it's a fun game for sure, so... In case you have any doubts about that... Uh, Divinity is amazing. Well, let's play Joachim. Okay, we got a poison. Yeah, he seems to be uh, pretty wrecked here. What the hell? Is it the Grand Servers? I find it hard to believe that he's having so many technical issues in this day and age. Huh. 
Nice. Really? I just need you guys to die. Only, only those who are with me. Wow. Okay. Massive regret here. We got him, boys. We got him. Poison is pretty good. So this version of the deck that's not like all only on poison works a lot better. It's very consistent. I like it a lot. GG. Okay, we got a very, very ugly uh, snake. Let's kick this. I don't know. Also, I'm getting more familiar uh, with uh, Curse Scroll is terrible. With how am I supposed to mulligan? Uh, which means uh, time for me to trash my monster's deck and use this. Yeah, it's fun. But you shouldn't trash your monster deck. If you're having fun with it, I, I like this process. I don't know. I, I, I think like some people might just look at me with like, hmm, why are you doing that? You know, this is obviously trash, but I like that process of like, this doesn't work. Okay, let's improve it. Or this works like, okay, but let's improve it. I, I like perfecting the deck. For me, that's fun. And I like that a lot. If I just... First of all, you can't even really look for the, the best decks out there, I suppose. And I do like the journey of like, trying to find the best deck. Especially in an ever-changing meta, it's kinda easy. If the... if... It can... a, sta uh, a stale meta could be boring, but... Uh, for sure. But... Trying to find the deck to counter it... Is difficult because... The matter is stale because those decks are very strong and it's it's uh it's hard to beat them. But at the same time, okay, let's just punch. At least you know what you're gonna face most of the time. So building a deck to counter it is a little bit more obvious. Can I lock that? I don't have a lock. Oh, can I make him draw into the foglet? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's make him draw into a foglet. Is this the uh, true evil? Guys, this is this is this is evil. Let's do it. I hope that's a foglet. Enjoy. It's not guaranteed that he's gonna get the fog. He just gets a uh, lowest cost. So if he he might have other stuff, but it can be a foglet. If he only has a foglet, then he's gonna get a foglet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh he got rid of the foglet. Yes, let's remember the glorious days after close beta when everybody said new weather sucks and Adam played better. Uh unfortunately this time weather does suck. And traps suck. I don't get it, you know? Traps were like at this level, and top decks were at like this level. Okay, whatever. Uh, so one is the higher. So traps were like a little bit worse than the top decks, but like, they were pretty competitive. And they were pretty uh, un un uh, unexpected. So they had that edge. Yeah, I can't really send in the Rot Duster here. Let's play the Cobra guy. But now, they made traps worse. And, on top of that... They also release better cards. So... What? Oh, we got a beast. Um, let's kill the beast. I got a target poison. Before he consumes it. At the end of turn, if this unit is not the unit with the highest power on the battlefield, boost it by two. Well, technically it is the highest unit on the battlefield. Now. I just keep punching.
Oh my god, he fucked up. Let's pass. Oh yeah. Nice. And all because he was using the bad tactical advantage replacement. That doesn't give him any points. I think tactical advantage is a little underrated now. That other options are available. That can give you like plus one point, but TA is still like five points. That's pretty good. Let's try to win. Okay. We're trying to win here. And this seems like a winning hand. Although, I'm not sure about the Rot Tusser. It's really strong with the Thirsty Dames. But at the same time, we're against Consume Monsters. So, no. You were top 3 for a few days, no? Uh, long time ago? Maybe. I was, I was top 5. Uh, uh, many times? Not, not that many times. A few times. Maybe we had the old ladder, not this. You become the. You become a pro. Uh, uh, you don't really become a pro. I, be, I I definitely preferred the old ladder. That was that was cool. Like trying to go for like top ten. That was really cool. He wasted his beasts. Ah, uh, I don't know. Beast is uh, beast is only just a seven pointer. I'd rather be top one hundred or like. I like, okay, I'd rather be top 100 with like a unique deck than play like a, a meta deck, like a copy deck on, on, on like top one. I just want to make my own deck. Yeah. Wait. A l you just have like that? Why? I guess we can poison that. Does he have uh, artifact counters? So, if he played the aristocrat, we would either get Vincent, uh, False Siri, or Fion. Let's go play another Thirsty Dane. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we're gonna deal with here. I like a Masquerade Ball. How many tons he wants? Why can't he the troll? Ask him! <laughs> oh shit. We found out. He's one greedy bastard. But he's forced to play round two. Do we just pass? I think he is. I wanted to win against him. But now he just played everything he has. To beat me up. I think we're just gonna pass on him. I mean, that looks super scary. I'll give you that. But... Which would be kind of hard to, to stop next turn. But now, not so much. I still kind of want him to commit, right? I can just pass now. Okay, let's just... Let's just uh, poison the, the troll. So, maybe he has to still commit some some high-level card. But I don't think so. He's just gonna play like a harpy. What? Oh my god, what a... What a bastard. He's giving me points. <laughs> oh my god, you fucked up so much! Okay, we pass now. And he also goes down a card. Wow. Take a cat. What are you doing, mate? Look at that, Gurnachora. Absolute madman. <laughs> what is this move? Oh my god. It is possible that he's gonna end up tying. No, no, no. He, no, no, no. Wait. Is it? Oh yeah, Jotun. Oh, he's smart. 
he gives me units, so his Jotun becomes a 7. <laughs> Very next level strat. It's so worth it. It makes Jotun look good, but you kind of forget the fact that you, you kind of gave your opponent a lot of stuff. But I get his strategy. But it's not gonna work. Wow. It's a good thing that he fucked up round 1. Else it would have been somewhat scary. But we... We can probably deal with that. Yeah, we can get one of these. But I would prefer. Actually, just... Yeah, let's kick one of the bot dusters. Final round starts. Your opponent has no hero power. One less cards. He, he still has the, the big idea of... <laughs> spamming my rose. If it's gonna work... Oh, man. I don't think he has... Artifact removal. We can lock that. If we really want to. I don't think he has artifact removal. Let's play Masquerade Ball in the front. Oh my. He has a strat. He has a decent strat, so... You can... Deny four slots on your opponent's board. Then four slots again. Then... Then eat the noon rat. Puggo. We can poison that. Do I care about Vincent, or do I just want to taunt? I might just want to taunt. Push on! No mercy! Feeling a bit peckish. As order, and our speed. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, for sure, despite his play, the, the strategy he's going for kind of makes sense. Imagine blocking 12 spaces last round. That's game over, man. Oh, no. Need the double poison. Wait, he doesn't even care about me killing Puggo? Why not? I guess if he consumes Puggo, which is gonna go up in points. But I just kill it. Okay. <sighs> Consume monster. <laughs> Fast time. <laughs> oh man. This was fun. Although he messed up. Good strat. I'm kind of tempted to vindicate him by making his strategy work. Myself. It would be fun, but wow. Okay, GG. 